would never get myself into. I will never cast Chase the Mind Sculptor Legacy. It's just not my well, style. He's not a goblin. Yeah, it's just not my style. I'm not going to splash blue in my goblin deck for Jace, no matter how powerful it is. So, you know, I'm actually going to see this in action for the first time. This seems like a miserable experience, as Charlotte's Agent is going to untap. Looks like it gets to at least attack that Jace down the one. All right, so is, is it what Jace does that makes you not want to play him, or the fact that you know you just can't splash blue? Like if Jace were two and two red, he'd be he would be he'd be an honorary goblin. If you could cast him in a goblin stuff, or no, still still just no, not for me. All right, all right, nothing personal, just not for me. So interestingly, this is I. It's confusing with these grindy matchups. You know, normally I'd say whoever gets the Jace going first, that's the guy who's ahead in the grindy matchup. This is a, this is new territory for me watching this game. Yeah, you know, I don't actually I, know. I actually don't know how this works. Like, yeah, okay. Who, normally, like the guy with the Jace is winning. Like, this like, I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to do now. They both have Jaces. Well, I feel like I know who's ahead. <laughs> it after seems seeing like the person just like <laughs> dropped a flurry of creatures would be ahead. Yeah, after seeing Upple's turn of playing Tarmogoyf, Tarmogoyf in the Death Rite Shaman, and knowing that Bronduin doesn't have like a Wrath effect, like a Damnation, or any way to really get these things off the board. He just has to brainstorm and try to catch up. Ancestral Visions, Tropical Island, and I think disfigure. that was a Disfigure. Yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw out how I think this works. I think lands are really important in this situation. Okay. This is my first instinct, because but remember, with when you have a Jace brainstorming every turn, and with this Shardless Agent Ancestral Visions engine that the bug deck has, I don't see these players running out of things to cast. So what's really going to be important, it's like turns into this tempo matchup. Both players have a million things to cast, but the question is, who can cast more of them? And right now, six to four, I think that's just an upload. Yeah, I mean, it's upload by a long shot here. Right, we, we saw him play right. Death Rage Shaman, Tarmogoyf, Tarmogoyf. Mm -hmm. That's five mana. Brian Brundwin can hardly match that. He's going to try to, of course. He's going to start by playing a Tropical Island and just pass the turn back. At least it looks like he's going to pass the turn back. And he is. Wow. All right. Yeah, so no plays here. What is he... Let's see what he's looking for. I know he, ha he has a lot of plays available. He could have buried that Ancestral Visions and then Shardless agented into it. He elected to do nothing with this turn. I mean, it feels like an Abrupt Decay. One, maybe two is what it feels like. I'm interested. It seems like Brian's going to be unable to protect his Jace right now. Yeah, I think that Jace is going to bite the dust, depending on how Upple does attack here. See from some 5-6 Tarmogoyfs in the house. Right. I mean, and once that happens, I'll be much more comfortable telling you about this board state once one of the Jaces is gone. <laughs> the, guy, the guy who has Jace is winning. Now. Okay, but... Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot easier it's, than... Right. Maelstrom false targeting Jace, huh? Wow, okay, he's just going right for the right for the dome. He doesn't yeah. want to waste any time attacking Jace, and he could just be attacking Brian. Brian's well, at, it's 13 on the board. That means that Upple loses his Jace. It's Wait, symmetrical. Hold on. Yep, hold on. You have yeah. to hold on. You've got to pause this here. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they they'll, are, they'll get to it in a moment. I mean, They're, they're going to figure out what just yeah, happened that, here. That means that Upple loses his, his Jace, yeah, too. No, his Jace is gone. Yeah, hold I mean, on. he fate sealed with it, but that... <laughs> Yeah. And how many times have you Maelstrom posted Planeswalker and be like, oh no, I got my own Planeswalker with it too. Yeah, his, his Jace is dead. Everyone, no one caught it. Because why would anyone catch it? I've never seen, I missed it too. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you that. Like, I don't think about killing my own, my own Jace. Yeah, I was, I, I, I was, I've been waiting for that play to actually happen for a long time now <laughs> in the bug mirror because oh both my. Jaces can be in play. So that, that was, that's actually one of the first things I thought of when the, when the rule took place is that, yeah, yeah. I never thought of it with Nails and Pulse. No, no, I'm watching this board and he, you know, I saw him pulse it and I was like, oh, that's aggressive. Never like, oh wait, that kills his own Jace. All right, Tarmogoyf going to bite. So both Tarmogoyfs die via via the Abrupt Decays. So now Upple is just left with a Charlotte's Agent <laughs> and now Disfigure's <laughs> going to take care of this. So all of a sudden, Ron Wind was like in a world of trouble and now he's like coming back? Well, when your opponent kills Vels their own Jace, that, that helps. Well, that's not a good idea. Okay. I cannot you know, advertise that. When you pulse that. your own Jace. <laughs> All that's, right, that's not something that you that you want to do. That's Here's not a bailable real, strict. you know. That's, this, is, this was bound to happen because this is the kind of mistake that happened that, that Matthias, where you make it once and you just go, oh, never again. All right. Yeah, no, I would have done. I could have done the same thing there. I am yeah. not gonna say that. You know, oh, oh, I can't believe you didn't see the play. No, 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 that's that's weird. Yeah, this I mean, it, it's a literally mistake that you know it happens the one time you're just like, oh, geez, that was awful. I'll make sure I never do that again. So now no player with a Jason play. Um, having played a little bit of this matchup, I know cards like. Baleful Strix and Shardless Agent start becoming very important in this matchup, along with Ancestral Visions, though it's a little slow. 
Yeah, Bronduin has three ancestral visions in his hand right now at, while he's resolving this brainstorm. Now, Matthias, you couldn't tell me who was winning when both players had Jaces. You were trying to wait until one player had a Jace, so you said yeah, that. Yeah, then I had the easy out. I mean, yeah, 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 the, the guy with a Jace. So now who's winning? Well, no players have a Jace. No players have a Jace. Um, it's going to be about who can keep more cards in their hand because basically these creatures are all just really good at one for oneing. Baleful Strix is excellent because it draws a card and then trades with the Tarmogoyf, which are some of the most important cards in this matchup. Um, the best clock in the matchup is actually probably Deathrite Shaman. It's the one thing that can deal damage most reliably. But I think really what it comes down to is the card drawing. Just a lot of things are going to trade. You want to be the person at the end when all the trading is done who still has cards left. Now, we saw when we cut into this game, Up will play multiple spells in one turn, multiple cards in one turn, and a flurry, just like BBD did. He plays a Tarmogoy, he plays a Deathrite Shaman, finishes resolving a Brainstorm, plays a Tar Pit, suspends right. an Ancestral Visions. As now, Upple's going to move to his turn, he draws an Abrupt Decay, and now he's going to go through the iterations on what he needs to do. Well, I would go back to when we're saying who's winning. Okay, I do think that Justin Upple's draw that turn makes this a little bit easier as... All right, oh. we're back. Oh, okay. Chase. I think he's gonna get this one right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I like the player with the Jace again. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the bold statement. Oh, there it is. Yep. There yep. it is. I, I think I think. Yep. See, we go kill spell Jace. I think he's ahead. This is why you get paid the big bucks, my friend. Yeah. So Jace is gonna bounce the Charmer Boy. Abrupt Gate takes care of the Death Right Shaman. In comes the Agent and the Strix. Vision's going to tick down. Right. Tarmogoyf die unnecessary. But that creeping tar pit can't mm -hmm. finish the Jace. And I was just going to point that out. This Jace is a temporary Jace. It may just be a really expensive unsummon in this situation. It unsummons and then might cost Brian almost his entire turn. Well, fortunately for Brian, he can actually relay that Tarmogoyf to brick... Er... Yeah, to brick that Charlotte's agent, unless... Upple does have another abrupt decay, which he does, but he's going to start his turn off with a brainstorm. So one in Charlotte's agent, two in Ancestral Visions, <laughs> and three Baleful well, Strix, making it look pretty easy as the wow. youngster. As you know, you know this. Uh, and then he does a pre savvy play here. What he does is he buries that Ancestral Visions under the land. He switches the order so that when he cascades with the Shardless agent, that he will not have to redraw that land. He's going to cascade, put that land on the bottom, and then get to cast the Ancestral Vision. Yep, there goes that Misty. There goes the Visions. One. Two and three cards coming for Mr. Upple. Yeah, it's like Mall Drifter, but a lot better. That's, a, I suppose, an apt comparison. Costs two less, gives you another card. I mean, it doesn't fly, but, it doesn't, it's, but, but it's an artifact, so you know, and that, that gets style points. Oh, sure, plus it makes Tarmogoy favor, so there you go. Right. All right, BBD, can you come back? Sitting at three, facing down three creatures. Here's a Baleful Strix to start. Hit one, Misty Rainforest. And I think the board advantage, you know, still could go either way, despite the fact that both players are drawing cards in a flurry left and right. But what we have to start looking at is the life point advantage. Uh, Ryan has to answer everything right now. He's at three. There's a misty rainforest. He's gonna looks like he's gonna pass the turn back to Apple. His hand right now is multiple copies of ancestral visions. You can see some frustration. Excuse me, some frustration there from BBD as Apple's gonna untap at 15 life. BBD sitting at three. Apple will draw his card for the turn. It's another baleful strix. He does have Lily on the veil in his hand as well. And it's looking like Brian may have run out of resources first. He's gonna have to use that creeping target on the block just to not die this turn. And. With this Liliana, I think, yep, all right. Yep. I don't think he has any morale. Yeah, so that is going to do it. Justin Upple is going to win this match two games to zero. Shardless Bug Mirror goes to the younger of the two. Brian Braun to win. He top baited yesterday as well, as did Huey Jensen, but we're not going to see a repeat performance for him. Gets his second loss at the hands of Upple, and with any luck, for Upple, as coming into this round, he's sitting at 10th place, he may be able to draw in. At 10th, it's a little less certain. He's going to be right on the cusp of who can draw in and who can't. Um, so we'll see with him. I I think Huey's, pretty, Huey's almost a lock to yeah, be in. Very, uh, very close. Yeah, his breakers were, were very high, which is what you get when you start out a tournament undefeated. Yeah.